My name is Crafty Kathy, and I want to welcome you to my channel. Thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me today. If this is the first time you've ever been to my channel, first of all, let me say welcome, and I'm going to let you know a little bit about me. I'm a nurse by trade, but I love to do DIY decor, and I've opened up a couple booths here in Chattanooga where I sell my decor. And on my channel, I like to do thrift flips, uh, Dollar Tree, furniture, any kind of DIY project, I like to do that. And also on my channel, I like to talk about ways that you can resell your projects. It doesn't have to be booth, but just different places. And if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, I would love for you to stick around and hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family here on YouTube. We would love to have you. Now today I am participating in a fall collab with three of my friends here from YouTube. They are amazing and you're probably going to know who they are. And we're going to talk about that just a little bit later on in the video. But for now, let's don't waste any more time. Let's just jump right into DIY number one. For the first project, we're going to start off with this 18 inch wood round. I got this at the Home Depot for roughly $10. Now you can use them as a cutting board, a lazy Susan, or like a door hanger, which is what I sell them as in my shops. I had previously painted this round, or I stained it, a color called Briar Smoke. It's that gray color, and I didn't like it. But that's okay because we are going to paint it. Right here, I have some wax, like candle wax. You can use any old cheap candle. And I'm just going around the areas and rubbing it on the places where I don't want my paint to stick. I'm going to use a color called Cashmere, and it's by Dixie Belle. It was their last year's fall color. And I'm just kind of going to dry brush this color on. I'm going to go very lightly all over it and just do one coat because that's all I want. Then I'm going to use my little scraper tool and I'm just going to kind of scratch over it everywhere where I put that wax at and it's going to make that paint just come right off and the paint underneath is going to show up. HTV Ront sent me some heat transfer vinyl and I'm going to try it for the first time and look at this cute SVG. I got this from a lady called LF Rustics. I'm gonna leave it in the description box in case you want one. Now this is the first time I've ever done heat transfer on wood. I usually just paint it on, but I basically just laid it down. First I got the, the wood just a little warm and then I laid it down. And the instructions said to do 305 degrees for about 15 seconds. And if it doesn't stick the first time, to go over it again. And it took probably about three passes with my iron press to make sure that it stuck down. Now, like I said, it's the first time I've done it. And the heat transfer vinyl was a little tough to stick on the wood. But I made it work. And... Like I said, it took me a few times and I was really slow with this because I wanted it to work. I didn't want to have to redo this whole thing and make it over again. So I went really slow and it came out gorgeous. Now, since this one's going to be a door hanger, I got to make a messy bow. And I always just cut my bows the size for whatever project that I'm using, I just kind of eyeball it. I cut a bunch of different ribbons and I make an X formation. And then I just tie it in the middle with some jute twine. And that's what you call a messy bow. And then you just kind of fluff it out and make it all cutesy and pretty. And when I do a messy bow like this, I always take the bigger, like the fatter, thicker, I guess you would say, ribbon and dovetail it. I only don't dovetail the little bitty small ones. I added my signature button in the middle of my bow and I put a little black and white like gingham looking little half bead and then I made a, so a small little bead hanger that had three beads on it. I cut a few sprigs of lamb's ear from Walmart and I put it on the left and right side up at the top. Then I added my bow. Let me know what you think about this one. I look out across the water I smell the song I feel the breeze 
For DIY number two, I got this cute little basket at the thrift store for just a dollar. And I am going to use Dixie Bell's color called Pumpkin Spice. And I'm just going to go around that top rim and then that little rim that's in the middle of the basket. But I actually ended up not liking this color. It was too light, so we're about to change it. But first I used my Voodoo Gel Stain, and I just put a little bit, squirted a little bit of it on, and then used my paintbrush to rub it in. Now I didn't wipe off the excess because I wanted it nice and dark like this. Now the second time I did the color on that top rim and that middle rim, I did the color Merlot, and I got it right. This color is so gorgeous. It's not like a bold burgundy. It's kind of like a muted burgundy almost, and it's gorgeous. Then I used my sublimation printer to make the cutest little SVG. Now this SVG is available in my Etsy store if you're interested, and I used my HTV Rot machine and put it on the correct settings. Then what you do is just lay your sublimation print down on your material, and I've got drop cloth, and this HE... TV Rant machine does the rest for me and presses it. Once I get the print on the front of my drop cloth, I just make a small slit with my scissors and then I like pull it with my fingers and it comes out perfect every time and it gives you frayed ends. Then I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to squirt some in each of the corners of my little drop cloth piece and that way it's going to be on the front of my little apple basket. Then I added my signature buttons, one on each corner, and I hope you like this one. So today I'm participating in this Hello Fall Fabulous Fall DIYs with three of my friends from YouTube. These ladies are phenomenal and so if you don't know who they are, you need to find out. As soon as you're finished with my video, I would love for you to go to the playlist that I'm going to leave in the description and all you have to do is click on that playlist and you can see each of their videos. Go show them some love and let them know that I sent you. And hey, subscribe to their channels and help them out. And if you're enjoying this content so far, I'd like to ask you to hit the like button. It really helps me out on YouTube. And hey, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. I would love to have you as part of my family. All you have to do is hit that little red subscribe button and there's a bell beside it. And when you click that bell, YouTube's going to let you know every single time that I upload a video. Now let's get back into the DIYs. The next DIY is going to be a wreath for the front door. It's a little fall gnome and it is adorable. Now you can make this with 100% Dollar Tree items. You take this hat that is a witch's hat from Dollar Tree and it's just a wreath form. And I did not have the burlap needed to wrap my hat. So I'm going to use what was in my stash. But if you use the burlap from the Dollar Tree, it's all Dollar Tree items. Since I had to make do with what I have, I have some of this faux leather that came from burlapfabric.com. And this is what I'm going to wrap my hat in. I'm going to start off by just wrapping the top portion of the hat and leaving the little brim part alone for now. I'm using Starbond glue because I didn't want any of the clumps from the hot glue to be shown through this. Now, I just basically winged it as I went. I went around the top part of this wreath form, and I just wrapped it the best that I could. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but hey, it's on the back, and you're not going to see it. I cut off any areas that were necessary for me to cut in order to make it look right. And I just cut it down and glued away until I had the whole top portion of the hat wrapped in that faux leather. 
And so far, this is what we've got. This is what the front of it looks like. Now I'm gonna take another piece of the faux leather that is long enough to cover the whole bottom part of the hat. And I start off by just making a little cuff up at the top because that'll make it look nice and neat. And we're just gonna place that cuff at the upper part there. And I'm gonna do the same thing. The wreath form was very easy to glue around. It's just the faux leather was a little harder to work with, but the burlap is very easy to work with. And I just wrapped it around the all the edges until I had a good fit and everything was nice and taut. And once again, I had to cut off any extra pieces that I didn't need, like any extra material that because it was just so much easier to wrap it if I didn't do that. I ended up wrapping that whole bottom portion. And again, it's not the prettiest thing on the back, but you never see that part anyways. And I cut down the edges to make sure that they looked right. And everything so far looks absolutely amazing. After all my hard work, I realized that I had glued a piece of the hat to the table, but that's okay, because we're gonna cover it up and you'll never know anyway. I'm gonna take some of these fake burlap leaves and I'm just gonna place one right over the top of that and I'm gonna glue it down with my hot glue gun. Now I'm gonna take some of these wood words from the Dollar Tree and I picked the one that says, Hello Fall, I thought that was cute, and I'm going to use my DIY paint in the color Summer Crush. And all it took was one quick coat and it is absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to take one of these little orange faux leaves, also the little burlap leaves, because I thought it needed a little bit more color, and I'm just going to glue it kind of in a different angle as the first one. Then I glued a couple of those small pine cones that comes in the Dollar Tree little packages, and of course, I couldn't finish it off without my signature buttons, and I put three, one orange and two black. Then I took this little piece of faux hay that's green and I stuck that in his hat too. Now we're going to use these maple leaves and they're from the Dollar Tree of course and this is what we're going to use to make his beard. They have all different colors of leaves and you can choose what you want but I just chose the traditional colors of fall. And you start off either on the right side or the left side and every time that you put a leaf down and you leave them on the bunch by the way but every time you put it down you just kind of flip it over and eyeball where it's going to land to gauge where it needs to go i tried to stick the most stems that i could up in the hat just so it wouldn't you know be ugly or anything or more ugly on the back and so i just put just a dab of glue and i would stick it up in there but basically, I did this the exact same way I do all my florals. Whatever I put on the left side, I put in the exact same spot on the right side. So I started off on the sides, one on the right, one on the left, and then a bunch in the middle. Once I finished with the left and the right and the middle piece, I went right back to that left side and repeated the process. Each time as I go down, I just make sure that I'm going in almost a V shape with the leaves to look like a beard. I used zip ties anywhere that I could on the back to just kind of make it more sturdy and hold it together a little bit better. Then when I was finished, I flipped my hat over and I fluffed all the leaves up and I tried to make sure that none of the little stems of the leaves were showing through. And in the spots where the leaves were showing, what I did was just take a leaf off of the back of one of the little stems, and I literally glued it on the front of the stem that was exposed just to cover it up and make it look more like a real beard. And the last step was take a Dollar Tree styrofoam ball and I wrapped it in like a little knee-high stocking, and then I tied a knot in the back and cut it off behind the knot. Now this is gonna be his nose, and I took it and just glued it right on the tip of the hat. He 
the next item is going to be this little pitcher that I got at a thrift store for just $2.99 and it's got the little dish with it and this is so cute because it's little and petite. So first I just cleaned it up and then we're going to paint it. I'm really into this Merlot color and so what I did was give it two coats and Merlot is the Dixie Belle paint. So it took two coats. The first coat always looks kind of eh, a little you know funky but then when you get that second coat on there it's just really pretty. I got the pitcher and the little bowl and I put on two coats. Now I'm going to take these transfers that I got from Prima Redesign or, or I got them from Amazon but they're Prima Redesign and this one is really pretty this little transfer so I'm going to put it right in the middle of my little um picture. I don't know why that word just keeps escaping my mind. It's late in the day and I'm tired. I'm so sorry. But it is a picture. Yes, Kathy, it is. And you know, a lot of times, instead of using that little tool that they send you, I like to use my fingernail, especially when it's on kind of a curved surface and you got, it's kind of scary. You know what I mean? Because you don't want it to bubble up or do anything funny. So I use my fingernail to make sure that I get good adhesion there. And then after I get the transfer on there, I burnish it. And that just means you take that film that it comes on and you rub it on it. And it just kind of pushes it down into the object a little bit better. And then I'm just simply going to take some of the little faux hay that I've got, set it in my little dish, and then set my picture in the dish. And it's really cute. But I felt like it was missing something. So then I took the word harvest that was on there. And I'm going to put it right over the top of that picture. And do the exact same thing. I used my fingernail. And then I used the little film to burnish it. And I think this one is beautiful. A little different than all the rest. A quite old fashioned where I had sometimes played chess. And when I'm out, I'm looking for that vintage fling. But all complexions that I adore, so hard to find, they seem impossible to score. So I. This is the last one, and it's a bottle that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use the color Cake Batter by DIY Paint. Everybody always asks me where I get my paints and supplies, and it's from Milton's daughter, and she gives my subscribers 10% off if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY, and so I'm going to leave that in the description box below so you can go and check her out. Okay, so what I did was take the cake batter and just did one coat, and then I'm going to use the crackle. And you just, when you use the crackle, you just go, it, you need to use a thick coat, don't uh you stir it up really good and you don't thin it out or anything and then you let it dry and then we're going to use the color merlot surprise surprise and when you put the merlot on you do one swipe down you don't go back and forth with your brush you just do one swipe and leave it alone so the crackle can work now we're going to decoupage and I wet my little brush and I've got this napkin with a beautiful fall scene. It's got like a little apple orchard and a boy and a girl raking leaves. Did you guys ever do that when y'all were little? My mom used to make us all get out in the yard and rake leaves and I hated it back then. But when I smell somebody burning leaves, it still brings me back to that time when me and my brother and sister just had to go out there and do that. But it created a good memory for me. So I got this down the way I wanted it, and I never, ever cut my napkins. I always rip them because it makes it look more natural. I put a little bit of Mod Podge on my finger, and that's how I pull that top layer of the napkin that we want. And all I do when I Mod Podge is I do it in two parts. I just put the Mod Podge down and let the napkin fall, and then I leave it alone. And I usually take saran wrap, but I didn't have any. And the only thing I could find was a plastic bag that one of my paints came in. So, hey, it worked. I put it on my hand, and I just kind of rubbed over the surface of this to get any wrinkles out. Then I took a little bit of jute twine, and I started in the back, and I put some hot glue on the back of my bottle. Then I just went around a couple of times and glued it back in place and cut off the excess. Then I took a lighter and burned off all my little fuzzies. 
you know, the Dollar Tree jute has a lot of little fuzzies on it for some reason, and I always just burn them off. And then I took my IOD mold because I felt like this was missing something. I took my IOD clay that I got from Milton's daughter, and I'm going to use this bottom mold. And this stuff feels like butter going on. It's so easy. And their molds are so easy to use because they have like a little lip on them. And when you run your finger across it, it just like, it just comes out perfect every time. And I get my molds from Lori at Milton's Daughter. So that's where I get all of my supplies in case any of you guys are wanting any or needing anything that you see me use, that's where I get it from. Now I wrapped it around the top of the bottle to see, you know, to kind of gauge it and it was going to be good. So I use my tight bond quick and quick and thick and I put it around the top. To me, it's the best glue to use with your molds. And I just went around the top. It had one little tiny piece that needed to be added to. So I made that little piece and added it. And then I put another piece of napkin on the back so that whole bottom part of the vase would be covered by this gorgeous napkin. Then I took my Merlot color and I painted where I put the mold at because it looks best when the mold is the same color as the jar or the jug, whatever you want to call it. And I made sure to paint in all those little creases that was inside. Then I took my DIY white wax and I went all around the little mold with a wax brush. And the wax brush gets all inside those little crevices perfectly. And then you just go back with a lint-free rag and wipe off the excess. I also put it on the top of the bottle and even at the bottom of the bottle so that the color would be consistent. And it was so pretty with this white wax over that Merlot color. It just really, it was just gorgeous. Next, I took some of this raffia that I got off of Amazon because I cannot find raffia in any dollar store anymore. I don't know what the deal is, but the Dollar Trees are like on strike with the raffia or something. I don't know. And I just tied a couple little knots in the top so it would kind of look crazy and, you know, uh, kind of going everywhere because I like that. I put my little signature button right in the middle of it. And then I got these gorgeous flowers from Amazon and they're in my Amazon store if you want some. And I put those in the top. Hey, I just want to say if you stuck with me through this whole video, thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my family. And hit that like button because it really helps me out. And hey, if you will, go check out the playlist in the description box below and go see my friends. There's three of them in this collab, and I hope that you go and see every single video. You're going to love it. Y'all have a blessed day. I love ya. P.S. Before you see any of these bloopers, I just have to make a statement that no rednecks and no hillbillies are harmed in the making of this video. And also, I am Kathy's cousin, and we are very country, but we are not making fun of anybody from Tennessee. Just to let you know, right off the bat. Alrighty then. Hey there, everybody. It's me, Bobby Joe, Kathy's gorgeous, talented, lovely, singing, stars in my eyes, cousin from the hills of Tennessee, baby. And I come all the way just to tell you that I love you. I know that y'all been asking Kathy about me because she talks to me all the time and tells me that y'all miss me when I'm not on here. So I just thought I'd touch base and let y'all know what's going on in my career. In case y'all don't know me, 
I am making my way to Hollywood. Yes, I was destined to be a star, honey. From the time I was born, I had stars in my eyes, and I've always wanted to go to California so that I can be a big old movie star. Well, you know, all this stuff going on with Johnny Depp lately, and I just know that I am going to be the next leading lady in his next big movie role. So I'm just waiting on a phone call. But I had my agent, well, it's actually my cousin twice removed and she married my brother. <laughs> so I'm not sure what she is, but she's family. Hey, we're from Tennessee, it's all the same. But anyways, um, I'm my cousin slash agent slash sister-in-law. <laughs> she told me that you will never believe who is coming to Nashville, Tennessee to do auditions. Oh yeah, American Idol. <laughs> and I can't believe it because I am going to go there and I'm going to sing for them. And I'm going to blow their socks off, baby. You know what I'm going to sing? <laughs> I'm going to sing a song by the great Loretta Lynn. Shout out, Loretta. You know I love you. I know she's watching this because, <laughs> hey, who wouldn't be watching me, really? <laughs> well, anyways, I'm going to sing that song from her that says, You ain't a woman enough to take a my man. Either that one or that other song that says, Well, you been a making your brags around town that you been a loving my man. But the man I love when he picks up trash, he puts it in a garbage can. And that's what you look like to me. And what I see is a pity. You better shut your face and get out of my way if you don't want to go to Fist City. <laughs> well, it looks like it's going to be that one. It's just written in the stars. I just know it. But anyways, so I will be going to American Idol, and I guarantee you that I'm going to be at least a runner-up. How could I not be, okay? <laughs> and you know that big spam commercial that I did a few weeks ago? Oh, yeah, it went viral. <laughs> I can't wait till y'all see it. But anyways, I love yous, and I will see y'all real soon. Bye!